What's up? I'm Brendan Vanson from Brendan Vanson Photography and Brendan's Adventures and today I'm going to show you my travel photography gear. Okay, so as you probably know, I spend my life traveling. I travel the world 365 days a year, which means I don't have the luxury of packing for certain trips in certain places. I have to bring everything at all times, but it also means that I can be a little bit more like uh, creative, if you will, with my gear. It means that I have to make some adjustments and it means that I have to do some travel hacking as well. Okay, to start, I'm gonna show off the most basic of photography gear, which is the camera body. Now, I shoot the Canon 60D, which is actually a crop sensor. It's 1.4 times crop sensor, which actually works in my advantage a lot of times. If I'm out shooting wildlife and stuff like that, I actually get more range. Of course, I also deal with things like uh, I get a ton of noise if I go anything higher than like ISO 400, but I can live with that because anything I go higher than that, I'm usually shooting on a tripod anyway. So that's the Canon 60D. Now let's get into my lenses. I don't use a lot of lenses. I keep it quite simple. And again, I'm using the crop sensor, so they're even cheaper lenses, which works in my advantage as a poor human being. Now this lens here is basically a kit lens. It's the Sigma 18 to 50, 50 millimeter. F2.8 to 4.5 with image stabilization and autofocus. It's a really, really good lens. It's actually cheaper than the Canon kit lens. And I love it. I actually really enjoy this lens as I like all of the Sigma wide angle stuff, which takes me to my second lens. This here is my baby. This is the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter F4 to 5.6. It's super wide, 10 to 20 millimeters, which is great for grabbing like the really wide angle uh, scenes. It's really cool to get buildings and even like portraits on the super wide. It's really, really fun. Uh, it's the equivalent if you were to shoot like a, a full frame of 14 to about 28 millimeters. So about the same uh, angle there. Now let's get to probably the lens I use the least. This is my 50 millimeter prime. Again, this is a cheap version. This is F 1.8. So it's really quite fast, but it's only a hundred bucks for this lens. This lens is only a hundred bucks. It's sharp as nails and gets you a really nice depth of field. So I use this for like portraits. I also use it when I'm trying to be like a little bit sneaky. When you go out with a big lens and a big body, people are a little bit apprehensive. With a 50 millimeter, people kind of just treat you like a, an everyday shooter, I guess, which works in your advantage with people that are a little bit more shy. Now, with people that aren't so shy, I bring out this guy. I couldn't go anywhere without this guy. This lens is my baby. I've had this lens forever. This is the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. It is fast. It's as sharp as they come. The image stabilization is amazing. Uh, the focus range it focuses to a minimum distance of uh, 1.4 meters, which isn't too great. But it's okay. It does pretty much everything you need. You can do a little bit of macro stuff with it if you're in a, pi a pinch. But what it's best for is wildlife. It's also great for portraits. This lens at portraits is amazing. You can get sneaky with it too if you're a long distance away from people. This lens should be in every travel photographer's bag. If you told me I could only shoot with one lens the rest of my life, it's probably this guy or girl. Yeah, I also shoot a GoPro. Uh, usually I do the videos with GoPro. Uh, I'm using my girlfriend Tiffany's lens, uh, camera right now, but I shoot the GoPro. I love GoPro. I shoot an old school GoPro. This is a Hero 2. And as you can see, it's gotten some use in it. I've taken this GoPro on like five continents already. It's taken a beating. This was on my helmet in Africa, on my scooter. This thing's been in rivers. This thing's been everywhere. This GoPro takes a beating. And I think it's like 300 bucks to buy new and so versatile. Uh, the image quality for photo isn't great, but in a pinch, Things for like, uh, you know, going rafting or stuff like that, it's great. It's really good fun. This uh, handle as well is great for like uh, underwater if you're diving. It's great for like just holding it out of the vehicle. It's really cool for, for rafting and things like that. Or even just taking a selfie. Yeah, for the GoPro, I also carry uh, this little tripod. This is a Gorillapod, uh, an off-brand Gorillapod. And it's really great. I do a lot of time lapse on the GoPro as well. So this thing will hold it steady and is really maneuverable. I can attach this to pretty much anything I want to. Now getting into the camera tripods, I really, really, really need an upgrade for my tripod. This is 
uh, an open tripod. They're great tripods. Uh, the only place I've seen them sold is at B&H Photography in, in New York, but I love it. But it is getting old and it's probably not as sturdy as I need, but it, it's really compact. So when you're traveling all the time, you need compact. Usually when you're going lightweight, you're gonna go carbon fiber, but uh, I'm poor, so I can't go carbon fiber. This was a really good compromise. It, this, this tripod's lasted me forever and I love it, but I do need an upgrade. I need a little bit bigger, a little bit sturdier these days. Uh, for a head, I have a separate head. I switched off the open head and I put on this really heavy duty Manfrotto head. This thing can hold, you know, a small elephant, I think. It's strong. So yeah, the Manfrotto head on the Oban tripod. And now I also use a monopod. The monopod's great for, for shooting portraits in the daytime if you want to get really sharp. It's also brilliant if you're on like safari because it's really maneuverable. So I put the Manfrotto head on top of this and I shoot this. I love this thing. I use it quite a bit. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a bit of a challenge to use at first because you've got to really get the hang of it. But you can shoot it on the ground like that, or if you're shooting portraits, you want just a little bit extra stability, you can just like stuff it into your pants even and just shoot straight off the top. Uh, it's kind of fun like that as well. So yeah, that's the stabilization gear. Uh, filters, of course. I don't use that many filters, although I should use them more often. This is a, a neutral densifying filter that's a gradient from, from Koken. Uh, it's cheap, 50 bucks. You should go probably more expensive than that, but again, I'm broke. This is just, this goes on the, on the edge. That's your filter holder. So you don't have to hold the square filters in front. And then I have a number of smaller filters as well. So that's a uh, four stop ND filter for the 77. That's a little polarizing filter, uh, which I don't use nearly enough. And then of course there's other things like the UV filters and such. <clears throat> a bit of a travel hack. This is what I use for macro photography. So like most of the time you have to buy a big $700, $1,000 uh, lens for macro photography, but you add one of these things and basically what you do is you're just separating the lens from the body and the sensor, which gives you a closer focal range, or sorry, lets you focus closer to the, to the item. So for example, I told you the 70 to 200 millimeter focuses at 1.4 meters away from the subject. You throw on two of these or three of these uh, macro extension tubes like this, and you're gonna be right up next to the, the image so you can do really cool macro stuff on flowers or insects or coins or whatever you're focusing on. These things are like 40 bucks and it, they come with some skill. You need some skill because you're gonna probably have the manual focus and you're really gonna have to have a stable hand or set things up on the tripod because you lose a lot of light using them. But it's a great budget travel hack. Um, finally, no, I've got two things left. This beauty, this pink beauty, this is like a, this is a Fujifilm Instamax Mini 8. And it's a lot of fun. The Instamax Mini 8 shoots like a little film shot. It's just a tiny shot. And they're really fun to take out on the streets. And you could probably use this to kind of like give a photo back to people if you want. You know, quite often we're taking photos of people out on the streets and it feels like we're always taking without giving anything back. This gives us the option to give back. You can take a photo of somebody and then give them the photo right away. I think it's really cool and I've had a lot of fun with it even though I've just had it. Um, this is the film you use for it. The film's quite expensive. I think you pay like $10 for, for 10 slide so it's like the good old days when you really have to conserve your uh, your your film it's really good though a lot of fun I highly recommend it and of course for storage you need one of these this is one terabyte uh, this is Western and I've never had these my passports crash ever I've gone through lots of different types of external hard drives and they've all crashed this one's never crashed knock on wood but yeah, I trust the WD stuff more than anything when it comes to the external hard drives. Finally, you always need somewhere to keep your gear. This is my Kata bag, and as you can see, it's been through a lot. Look at how it's, it's starting to come apart. But I've had this thing for like two and a half years. 
It's been on the back with me in the scooter for 17,000 kilometers. It's been on my back for like 700 days in some of the harshest climates, hiking, biking. It's been everywhere. This bag is awesome. It's got enough room in here to do the 7200, the camera, and then three lenses. So plenty of room in the bottom. It's got the whole top half that I can put other gear in as well. Uh, I love this Cata bag and it's past its prime now, but I'm definitely gonna pick up another Cata bag as soon as I get back to, to North America, which is a couple months away. So that's it for me on Brendan Benson Photography. That's my gear, that's my camera gear. I hope you liked the show. I hope you uh, got a nice insight into the things I pack around. I know it doesn't seem like a lot of gear, uh, a lot of people expect that I just have tons of it, but when you're packing it around on your back all around the world, it's a lot. Believe me, it's a lot. I'd love to downsize, but there's just no way, and I'm sure that in the future I'll probably be picking up more gear along the way. Anyways, as I mentioned, that's it for me on, on the show. Uh, I urge you to go over to brendansadventures.com where there's a lot of photography-related stuff, a lot of posts. Right now I'm in China, so there's lots of stuff from China. And also subscribe to the show. I'm going to put an annotation there. So subscribe, please, to the show. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming up. We've got critiques, we've got on location, we've got some information on how to get the shot, and we've also got some tutorials. So yeah, that's it for me, as I've said about 12 times now. Take care. Peace.